2011 marks the 20th anniversary of this iconic nameplate, and to celebrate, they've come out with an all-new Ford Explorer. This thing has been selling like hotcakes. Buyers have had to order them months in advance, so let's find out what all the fuss is about. No longer a truck-based SUV, this new Explorer is based on the same car platform as the Ford Taurus, Ford Edge and Flex crossovers. No longer available with a V8 engine, this new 2011 is powered by a 290 horsepower 3.5 liter V6 and the 2012 will be offered with an EcoBoost turbo four cylinder. Now Lacey, I got to attend the media launch of this vehicle in the San Diego area and I got to meet the chief engineer of the Explorer's name Jim Holland. He was handpicked by the CEO of Ford to build this very important vehicle. And I asked him what the number one job was in engineering this vehicle. He said fuel economy. This 2011 Explorer is 25% more efficient than the outgoing model. And aerodynamics play a large part in achieving this. The bold design isn't just attractive, but 12% more efficient at slicing through the air. Plus the car-based platform is much lighter than the outgoing truck-based unit. The front grille looks almost Range Rover-like, especially with the color-matched front grille. Now, this new Ford is longer than the model that it replaces, but it's wider than the Flex, so there's plenty of interior space for the standard third row of seats. Now, Ford claims that they benchmark European luxury crossovers for the interior of this new Explorer, and in many ways, they produce a good-looking unit. One major gripe for me, anyway, the dead pedal, the third pedal here on the floor, it's at an angle that I don't find comfortable, and you are not really able to stretch out your left leg, especially on a long trip. The occupant's touch points, like the door and dash materials, are soft and well-crafted. The instrument cluster and the center console feature classy looking backlit and modern buttons. The optional My Ford Touch is the very latest in vehicle entertainment and connectivity. The voice activated navigation system can search for destinations while the driver stays focused on the road and the high end Sony stereo is a tour de force. If you don't like tech heavy gadgets, this vehicle might not be for you. The instrument cluster is also bracketed by two small screens for displaying a variety of vehicle and entertainment information. I'm not a fan of voice commands. I tend to use the touch screen, which becomes easier to use with each visit. Ford is classing the Explorer as a mid-size crossover, so the second and third row of seats aren't quite as roomy as the full-size Flex is. But you know what? There's plenty of room back here for most families. Now don't be fooled. This is a big crossover. For some people, it might be a bit overwhelming. Now earlier I mentioned Jim Holland, the chief engineer of this new Explorer, and he had a key few targets for this new product. He wanted it to be quieter on the inside than the competition, a capable SUV, and also to handle better with less body roll. This new Explorer easily achieves these targets compared to the old model, but there had to be some sacrifices to meet these new objectives. With only 17% of Explorer buyers ever taking their vehicle off-road and 80% never using their Explorer for towing, the new focus was on ride and handling over ruggedness. Now, by using a car-based platform, they're able to save on fuel, but they're also able to dial in the suspension better than a pickup truck-based SUV. So what you get is good on-road dynamics. It corners better, it's smoother on the highway, and you also get a fairly firm ride. In addition, four-wheel drive units have a center controller called terrain management for choosing between sand, off-road, and snow settings. These individual programs allow more or less wheel slip depending on the driver's requirements. Okay, I mentioned it earlier, but this dead pedal thing drives me crazy. There's no way to stretch out my left foot. Now, this Explorer feels wide, very wide. Now, recently on the show, we had the new Durango, and it has a much more compact feel when you drive it. This drives beautifully, as we mentioned, the car-based platform, but it feels big and wide, and it's a bit more of a vehicle to maneuver. Now, Ford has another vehicle in their stable that I actually prefer over the Explorer. Three-row, full-size crossover, the Flex. Now, the styling on that is a bit polarizing, but I actually prefer it to the Explorer. Able to tow up to 5,000 pounds, the Explorer is more than enough for most family duties. Now, if you do a lot of towing, a crossover isn't really the way to go. You want a body-on-frame SUV. 
There's no V8 engine offered, only a 3.5 liter V6 with 290 horsepower, and for 2012, there's an optional 2 liter four cylinder turbo EcoBoost engine with a reported 240 horsepower and 270 pound feet of torque. It's a shame that the other V6 EcoBoost engine found in the Flex and Taurus SHO is not offered in this large vehicle. But with looming fuel consumption targets for all manufacturers, I guess the time is now to wean people off bigger engines. I think one of the greatest things about driving this new Explorer is its car-like drive quality. It's got a very comfortable suspension and a light steering feel. But if you're in the market for something that feels a little bit more rugged, this isn't for you. You know what, this new Ford Explorer front wheel drive base model, just over $28,000. You quickly kick over 30 when you get into an all wheel drive and add more toys, but there really is a price range in an Explorer for most people in the marketplace. Is this new three road Explorer just what the public's looking for, do you think? You know what, Zach, the old Explorer, I could take it or leave it, but this new one, I love it. Um, first of all, the exterior styling is a huge improvement, I think, over the last model. Very handsome looking. Get onto the inside of this Explorer. The dash and the layout is really upscale looking. The use of fabrics and materials looks high end. This V6 engine is more than adequate for most people, and the shifts are very smooth. And, you know, Zach mentioned it earlier, but there's a huge improvement with fuel economy over the outgoing model as well. And on the downside, this Explorer impressed me. My only complaint is that for a mid-size crossover, it drives big. It feels long and wide. That's it. Zach. All right. For me, I like the styling. I, I agree with you there. It's a refined, smooth, quiet, good handling vehicle. All of that thanks to that car-based platform. You get three rows of seats of standard equipment, and the starting price is great. Uh, recently, we had the Durango on the show. It started at like 38, 39,000. You can get this one starting at $28,000. Granted, it doesn't have much in it, but you can get it if you need those three rows of seats. So there's good value there. On the downside, the dead pedal. I touched on it a couple of times in the review really annoying for me Lacey didn't notice it at all the my four touch system can be overly complex the voice activation doesn't always work as described the push buttons aren't accurate and sometimes the navi lags behind what you're really doing on the road but the biggest one for me Lacey is that dead pedal there where the driver puts his left foot just doesn't work for me I find it like the whole time I'm like oh I'd like to rip it out well you know what Zach I didn't even notice it I mean you've got a couple inches on me so a couple <laughs> See all our reviews 24 hours a day at drivingtelevision.com.